In the end, the fuse was lit, and everything exploded. This time, it looks like the situation will go beyond a simple military clash between the Hamas terrorist group and Israel. That phase is now over. On October 7, 2023, hundreds of Hamas terrorists invaded Israel by land, sea, and air, causing significant destruction. They called it Operation Al-Aqsaf. Sadly, more than 1,400 people have lost their lives at the time of making this video. These casualties include men, women, and children from various backgrounds who were going about their daily lives, attending events, or even staying at home. The Hamas attackers left behind a trail of devastation, and many people were kidnapped and taken back to the Gaza Strip. The images from the Hamas attack in Israel have been so disturbing that we hesitate to show them here. However, many of you have probably already seen them on social media. These images show a level of violence we've typically associated with groups like ISIS, and it's an extreme display of hatred, even by Hamas's standards. At the Israeli Music Festival, 260 bodies were found in the area where people tried to escape from gunfire. Hamas has threatened to harm an Israeli hostage every time Israel attacks Gaza civilians without warning. This time, Hamas is operating differently from what we're used to. They have more troops, advanced weapons, and technology. This raises important questions. Can Hamas do this on its own, without outside help? Why have they started a war with Israel at this moment? Recent events suggest a possible link to a specific country, the Islamic Republic of Iran. But why would Iran be involved in such a terrible act? It seems that Iran might have had motives for encouraging this aggression against Israel at this particular time. While we don't have all the details, it's becoming increasingly clear that Iran may be connected to this disturbing story in some way. To understand Iran's possible involvement in these events, it's crucial to first learn a bit about Hamas. Hamas is a group with a jihadist ideology, and they have been in control of the Gaza Strip since 2007. But how did they come to power? In 2005, Israeli forces, who had military control of the Gaza Strip, withdrew unilaterally. After that, a power struggle began in Gaza between two Palestinian factions, Hamas and Fatah. This struggle ended with Hamas taking control of Gaza through force, while Fatah retained control of the West Bank. Although there were elections, in reality, Hamas took power through force. Now, why is this relevant to our video? It's because Hamas has a different stance compared to many. They don't support the idea of two separate states, one for Jewish Israel and another for Arab Palestine. Fatah, however, leans towards accepting this solution. To put it plainly, Hamas seeks the complete removal of Israel and the expulsion of Jews from the region through jihad. They believe this entire land belongs to Muslims and only Sharia law should govern it. This is evident in articles from Hamas's founding charter. They make it quite clear. Hamas is made up of Muslims dedicated to Allah, who they sincerely worship. They understand their responsibilities towards themselves, their families, and their country. They hold a deep reverence for Allah and advocate for jihad against oppressors, aiming to cleanse the land and people from impurity, vices, and evils. As stated in Article 3 of the 1988 Hamas Covenant, Hamas believes that the land of Palestine is sacred and should remain under Muslim control until Judgment Day. According to Islamic Sharia law, this land, once conquered by force, should never be given up. In essence, Hamas didn't originally emerge as a Palestinian liberation movement. Instead, it started as a jihadist group with the goal of expanding Islamic territorial control. This has been their approach for years. Essentially, we're talking about a group with similarities to others like the Islamic State, Islamic Jihad, or Al-Qaeda, albeit with a more developed political aspect. It's crucial to note that they do not support, believe in, or accept the two-state solution. The Gaza Strip serves as a clear example of this situation. Hamas has maintained strict control over it since 2007, and their primary objective has been to continue their struggle with Israel. 
The violent attack on October 7th exemplifies this visual politic community. When Hamas mentions jihad in its founding charter, it essentially means the destruction of Israel, which involves two key aspects. Firstly, Hamas distinguishes itself from the Alatar government in the West Bank, which accepts the two-state solution. However, recent events cast doubt on the viability of that solution. When discussing Palestine, it's crucial to differentiate between the Alatar regime in the West Bank and the Hamas regime in Gaza. They are not the same. Secondly, the concept of jihad is significant because it aligns Hamas with Israel's historical enemies in their goal of eliminating the Jewish state. Controlling the Gaza Strip gives Hamas significant influence in any conflict with Israel due to its geographic location and the ability to easily destabilize and attack Israel. For years, Hamas has been using rockets as a means of attack, as they did on October 7. This capability has garnered interest from Israel's major opponent, Iran. Since the Islamic Revolution of 1979, Iran has maintained a hostile stance towards Israel, consistently issuing threats of war and destruction. So, what are Iran's interests in the Palestinian region? What drives this Islamic Republic to be so active in confronting Israel? And perhaps most importantly, why has Aaron chosen this moment to escalate tensions and support, or even push for, this aggressive move against its archenemy? We're going to delve into that right now. Shifting alliances. Influential Arab countries have been gradually altering their stance towards Israel in recent years. The culmination of this shift was the Abraham Accords, in which the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, Sudan, and Morocco recognized and established normal diplomatic relations with Israel. In addition to recognizing Israel, it was anticipated that this agreement would renew the U.S. security guarantee for Saudi Arabia and possibly lead to Saudi Arabia increasing its oil production levels. Rayav was willing to boost oil output to facilitate a normalization deal with Israel. This historic three-way agreement would also include a U.S.-Saudi defense pact, weapons sales, and a civil nuclear program, as reported by WSJ. However, on October 7, all these prospects were disrupted due to the major attack and Israel's subsequent response. So the key question is, who would have been most affected by this deal, which seemed to be on the verge of announcement? Perhaps this agreement wasn't in the best interest of Hamas and the Palestinian National Authority. They stood to lose significant influence, and the Palestinian conflict might have taken a back seat. However, there's one major regional power, a significant player in the Muslim world, for whom this agreement was clearly unfavorable. You likely know exactly who we're referring to. Iran has been, is, and will remain, as long as the Islamic Republic endures, a staunch historical enemy of Israel. The Abraham Accords, in the eyes of Iranians, represent a betrayal of Islam by the Arab nations involved. Iran's government has openly declared its objective as the destruction of Israel. This is why, in recent years, Iran's Revolutionary Guards and the Q Force have become major influencers in the international anti-Israel movement. Beyond religious concerns, Saudi Arabia's recognition of Israel would have dealt a serious strategic blow to the country's interests. Their regional influence would decline, oil revenues would decrease, and the new alliance of the United States, Israel, Saudi Arabia, and other Arab countries would find it easier to take action against Iran's nuclear program. Adding to the complexity, Iran's anti-Israel stance is attracting radicalized Sunnis dissatisfied with their governments particularly those who adhere to the Ayatollah-controlled branch of Islam. Shiism. Aaron has been funding, training, and equipping various Arab terrorist groups for decades, aiming to fight against Israel. This includes three major branches operating in the region today, Hamas in Palestine, Hezbollah in Lebanon, and the Al-Assad regime in Syria. Additionally, there are Iran-backed militias in Iraq, that wield significant influence on the Iraqi government. This is a serious matter. It has led to direct or indirect military interventions by both Israel and Iran in each other's countries. Besides Iran, 
Russia under Putin's leadership might also find advantages in the Hamas operation. The trilateral agreement involving the United States, Saudi Arabia, and Israel was central to the White House's strategy against Putin. With this agreement, the U.S. could have alleviated the global oil shortage, leading to a reduction in crude oil prices. This would have impacted Russia's oil revenues while improving Western economies. Such economic stability in the West might have curtailed the decline in public support for the Ukrainian war, which seems to be ongoing. Since August, there have been notable interactions between Hamas, Hezbollah, and the Iranian regime. The frequency and regularity of these meetings were highly unusual. According to reports from the Wall Street Journal, senior members of Hamas and Hezbollah admitted that Iranian security officials assisted in planning the surprise Hamas attack and gave approval at a meeting in Beirut on October 2, 2023. The details of this significant assault, the largest border violation by Hamas since the 1973 Yom Kippur War, were reportedly discussed in meetings in Istanbul, Turkey, and Beirut, involving representatives from Hamas, Iran, and Hezbollah. The report also suggests that officials from Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard played a role in planning the air, land, and sea incursions Hamas carried out. With this information, Iran's involvement in this conflict, while not officially confirmed by the governments most involved, seems highly likely. Iran had strong motives to support and encourage this attack at the precise time it occurred. Regardless, it's evident that this recent war will have implications far beyond the Israel-Gaza conflict, potentially influencing the region and even global affairs. Now it's your turn. Do you believe Iran played a direct role in Hamas's attack on Israel? What are your thoughts on the likelihood of a conflict between Israel and Iran, or even a larger engagement involving the United States? Share your opinion in the comments to kickstart a discussion. If you found this video engaging, remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching. Best regards, and see you next time.